Hi guys, you are with Randy Koo from AndroidAuthority.com and today we are taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. It's the latest device from Samsung. It runs a 1.6 GHz quad-core processor. It has 2 GB RAM and an 8 megapixel camera. It's one of the fastest devices from Samsung and is considered from this review the best device in the market right now. So it runs Android Jelly Bean 4.1 and together with Project Butter this is one of the smoothest devices from Samsung and it's also innovative together with the S Pen and we will be taking a look at this through all the functions of the Note 2 a very in-depth look and what we'll do is we'll begin with the settings there are a lot of new functions in the Note 2 as compared to the original Note um, if you look at the network connectivity there is now NFC and SVM this previously was available in the S3 but now as Samsung is expanding their devices um, it's now available on the Note 2 which makes file transfers very convenient you can basically throw a 100 megabyte file video or photos of your friends so easily right now so it's one of the better additions to the Note 2 so apart from the S3 and the Note 2 I'm not, I don't think there's any other devices running S-Beam at the moment uh, together with um, NFC but in terms of the Samsung range it's the Note 2 and the S3 apart from that you would have a new home screen mode uh, for beginners to Android people would actually opt for easy mode but I think that basic mode is more than enough so this is something that could give some users who are new to Android an option to use in terms of blocking mode this is a bit of um, a way for you to block out your notifications and calls for example if you want a good night's sleep and you're a light sleeper and you don't want people to be bugging you at 3 a.m. in the morning you could use this function and you can set the time frame from what time to what time for this blocking mode to to be switched on and it will allow none of your notifications you could make an exceptions to a few of your people on your contact list which is great so this new blocking mode would give you more privacy and more space to yourself to think in terms of the sounds options I did notice that they took a very nature driven direction very similar to the S3 if you look at the kind of sounds that there is on this Note 2 it's very similar to the inspired by nature um, theme of the S3 so it's very concurrent with their direction of their, what they are taking with their devices this year in terms of display now you would have LED indicators for voice recording as well which is really nice apart from that there is a page buddy option which allows you to gain certain features it will redirect you to a page with uh, your features so let's say for example I am switching this page buddy on and I'm pulling out the S Pen it will redirect me to a page for the S Pen so it makes using this phone easy um, and as well as very direct and you don't have to really fiddle with it a lot unlike um, Android previously this may annoy some people who actually prefer more control in Android but it allows new users to have a, a experience unlike any other it is it's, it's not like something that you have to figure it out yourself it thinks for you it does think on your behalf so that's a great addition to this Galaxy Note 2 which I think that it is a device that helps you a lot because 
unlike the original note, there's a lot of learning process that you will have to go through to use this device. Thirdly, um, storage-wise, uh, the Southeast Asian version comes with 16 gigabyte of space, and after your ROM and um, your internal apps, you would have a balance of 10 gigabyte space available for your apps and your storage. And this is expandable with a micro SD. In terms of applications manager, they have changed it to a gingerbread direction. It is unlike the application uh, manager in the S3. It, you can basically swipe left and right. It makes it easier now. The lock screen has also been changed to allow pop note on a lock screen. So for example, let's say I'm the kind of person that I require my privacy. I don't like people to go into my device. I could just pull out the S Pen, press the S Pen button, double tap on the screen, and it would launch the note, the pop-up note, and I could simply take notes, save it, without even entering my device. So it allows a lot of uh, features and functions without even having to touch the device a lot. So it gives users a lot of options in terms of privacy and security. In terms of one-handed operation, now it is available also for the calculator unlock pattern. Previously, um, it's available only for the call buttons and keyboard. But now, as you can see, there's a lot more that you can do with your device. And it allows you to, for people with smaller hands, to do things easier. So Samsung is thinking about you. The 5.5 inch display may come with a drawback. It might be a bit too big for some people. But with one-handed operations, it's just nice. In terms of language and input, uh, there is a pointer speed for your mouse. You can connect a Bluetooth mouse to your device and it will generate a pointer. You can control the speed of that pointer now. Cloud storage will be very much in terms of your Samsung account or together with your Dropbox, which is fantastic. Motions um, currently add on what the S3 had into the device. Things like direct call and smart alert which were previously available in the S3 is now also available on the Note. There's a lot of uh, advanced settings uh, like quick glance and gyroscope uh, calibrations for certain um, motion functions as well. So it basically allows you to use your device in a different manner unlike previously. The S Pen allows you to choose your dominant hand and to activate sounds So whenever it's disconnected. Um, Air View is one of the interesting things in the device. So Air View basically generates a little pointer as you can see in the video as to where the pen is pointing at. So this would allow certain functions in the planner for example where you can see your information without even opening and touching as planner yeah so for example this is a calendar and I could just hover over certain things and I can see items and I don't have to touch the screen previously it has to be touched and you have to open it and it will actually pop up but now with air view all you have to do is hover over the items and it will create a pop-up for you to see so that's really convenient uh, gives you a lot of speed when you're working and planning your day gives you a lot of flexibility that also works in the gallery So AirView really makes things simple for you and fast. So users can really get to what they want faster 
and more direct. There's a new form of gestures on the S Note 2. In terms of gestures, you can create new gestures. So for example, if you want to send, you want to do a Google Maps search or an internet search, all you need to do is press the S Pen button and drag up. Alright, I might need to be in a different menu for that to happen. So let's say I'm in the home, home screen, and I'm pressing the S Pen button and I'm dragging up. It will generate a quick command gesture which will allow me to do things from Google search to opening apps. So let's use the example. Let's just do a search on the Note 2. Galaxy Note 2. And as you can see, what the device would do is it will try to read your handwriting and it will try to do a search based on that and you get apart from just Google searches you can launch Google Maps or whichever gesture your your binding your handwriting to so let's say I'm gonna do a search of let's say Kuala Lumpur Oops. Let's go back and try again. Kuala Lumpur. This was basically launched the Google Maps and you will look for Kuala Lumpur and you can see it's rather accurate it will depend on your handwriting and um, how used you are to using the S Pen so it's rather accurate these gestures would make your life really easy so I can do things from uh, opening Facebook to launching apps to doing a lot of other stuff so it gives you a lot of flexibility as well as it takes customizing your device to your uh, the, the, the way that you work to another level which is great apart from that this device runs on 4.11 which is one of the latest versions apart from 4.2 which until now we are not sure is a new update to Jelly Bean or whether it's going to be Key Lime Pie. Um, so this is Android 4.11 Jelly Bean. Let's take a look at the S Note. The S Note still carries pretty much the previous function of the Galaxy Note. Um, there's not much changes here uh, but now what you could do is you could record your notes with the record button. You could do uh, knowledge search there as well and you could disable hand touches which means that if you touch it accidentally with your hand it will not compute, it will not identify those as touches but only with the pen and there are a lot of pressure sensors on the S Pen which now you can see that the the thickness of the pen and what you draw will vary according to the pressure that you put on so if you have placed a lot a, a very light touches it will be very thin if you are pressing onto the screen it's going to be very thick so it is based on the pressure which also means that previous S Pen's accessories that you bought for the original note may not work that well or probably might not even work at all for the Note 2. So that would require consumers to reinvest in new in this new S Pen and the old S Pen is not really usable anymore. If you take a, a look at the player, video player, um, you can now have pop-up 
view as well. This could be resized if you prefer it to be larger or smaller. There's also an option for you to zoom into your videos in landscape mode. So you can have a closer look at your videos, which is nice. And at the same time, you, there's this camera function that allows you to capture pictures of your video while it's playing, which is great. It's, and you can basically preview it while your video is still playing. So that allows you to have a lot of uh, functionality uh, rather than using the home and power button to capture or use your hand to swipe to capture. It. That still works without a doubt. As for S Pen gestures, previously the pressing the button of the S Pen and pulling up bring up the menu, but now as I've shown you, that brings up the gesture uh, option. Um, the the gestures has changed. It previously pressing the button and pushing left would go back, but now you will have to draw differently, as you can see. By pressing the button and drawing an uh, arrow form of. No, that wasn't what I wanted to do. So if you press the button and you do that, that will go back. If you press the button and do a um, carrot, I think that's what they call it, it will bring up the menu. So there's a new relearning of gestures that has to happen um, with the Note 2, which is a learning curve for those who want to get this device. Um, unlike the original Note, the Note 2 is really gaming capable. Um, like the like games like Shadow Gun, which run really well on the S3, but uh, it would suffer on the Note original Note 2. Now is pretty much very smooth and playable on the Note 2. It goes to show that the quad core processor is very capable. It goes to show that Samsung is really taking the device to the next level. As you can see, the animations is smooth and it's vibrant and it goes to show that the Note 2, unlike the original Note, is considered a gaming device. Which is good because it is a bigger screen and it is a bigger experience that gamers might like. The Note 2 also comes now with Google Now, the application that is really fast and it allows you to do a lot of Google searches that is uh, previously only available to S Voice which is still in my opinion inferior to Google now. So if I do an example, search for Twitter account. And as you can see in this demonstration, it's very accurate, very fast. Um, one of the better things that is in Jelly Bean. So this might make um, consumers uh, give them a desire to upgrade their devices. And it is one of the more interesting things that you can customize. You can have cards, and it's more personalized than S Voice. Although S Voice is still carried in this device. Uh, another thing about this uh, device is the multi screen. All you need to do is hold the back button, and it will enable the multi screen option. This can be moved from bottom to right, to left, and even to the top. So it gives you more uh, customizability. You can also do multiple things at the same time. Like for example, you could run Gmail and a browser at the same time.
So this allows you to multitask in true time. Um, unlike the S3, which still requires you to switch between apps, this actually allows you to do two things at once. And if you look at the RAM usage, it uses up to 1.4 gigabyte RAM. That is why this device needed two gigabytes of RAM, which really fits it well. So multi-screen really takes this device to the next level. And this device, even though with a lot, uh, much more um, display space, uh, display real estate, um, you could do more things with it. It's smooth, it's jelly bean. It is one of the best devices right now. Um, if you ask me whether this is better than the S3, I would say yes, without a doubt. And there's also a new function to the camera. It's called... It's called... Best Face. What it'll do is it'll take a series of shots of photos of people and it will basically align the faces together to give you a better group photo. So these are the things that comes with the new Galaxy Note 2. There's also a function for you to, to quickly crop items. Um, by pressing the S Pen button and drawing, you can basically crop out things pretty fast. Uh, this gives you speed when it comes to your productivity. And this device is about 2,299 ringgit in Malaysia. That's about 700 plus US dollars. Um, I think it's quite um, pricey for what it does. But for the value uh, provided by this device, it is one of the better ones. If you look at the internals of the device, it is very similar to the S3. But the S3 only carries one gigabyte of RAM, which makes it uh, really impractical to have multi-screen. But this device, it, in, in terms of the, the insides of the device, is very similar to the S3. So in terms of repairs and, and, and fixing the device, if it ever uh, has any problems, it would be very easy to fix in terms of finding spare parts and, and sending it to your service center. In terms of benchmarks, this device rocks. It is even faster than the S3. Uh, the S3 clocks about 5,600 on Quadrant. This clocks to close to about 6,000 or about 5,900. So this device, although with more real estate on screen, it is better, without a doubt, faster than the S3. Uh, I have not had the opportunity to compare it with a Jelly Bean version of the S3, but I believe it is very similar in that regard. But if you are looking for a new device that is cutting edge, that is innovative, uh, that really takes technology beyond the norm, this is the device that you are looking for. As you can see, it runs 6,172 on Quadrant. That is a big achievement for a device this size. It is gaming capable with a quad-core processor. It is a fantastic camera shooter. It is brilliant with the S Pen. It is Jelly Bean, the smoothest and fastest Android version around. It is productive with multi-screen and allows you to do two things at the same time. Everything that you ever wanted in a device, the Galaxy Note 2 is. Thank you for watching this review and drop us comments in the comment boxes below.
if you are planning to pick up the Note 2 and you have any other questions that you want to bounce off us, do let us know. Alright, again this is Randy Koo from Android Authority reporting right here from Kuala Lumpur. Have a nice day.